Oh, amateur hour over here. Doing it again. I clicked the mute button, but I clicked the wrong one. <laughs> uh, so let's do it again. All right. Hello and welcome. My name is Brendan. This is Accidental Origin, your weekly writing web show. Um, yeah. What's everyone been up to? What's new? What's fun? Uh, I totally forgot to turn on my lights. That's okay, because we got natural sunlight coming in. Um, other than that, uh, I was planning on doing more of the uh, stuff I was working on last time with um, finishing up uh, another draft of Fear the Siren. Um, what do I got? Let's, let's flip this over to our main screen here. I just want to do one thing. Uh, control shift I. Is that what it is? I always forget. Yeah, control shift I. Should have done this before. <laughs> uh, oh well. I'm gonna shrink this a bit more. And I'm gonna delete that because I don't need it. Folder. I prefer editing from a uh, a blank more so than just taking the old one and rewriting it. it. Makes it easier. I do a lot of cut and pasting, but I find it's easier to keep myself focused in the right ways. Um, so yeah. And yeah, I have my uh, my physically edited document here uh, to go over. So I'm gonna refer to that. Um, the other thing I wanted to open that I didn't, that I should. Uh, always a good thing. Have open <laughs> when you're doing editing. I suppose I can leave this up here. Oh, and I want that other, uh, what was that? Hey Willow, what's up? Hope of December. How's everyone doing? Uh, yes, thank you Google. You're like such, such an amateur. Oh, here we go. This is what I was looking for. <laughs> oh, damn. Where are you? Oh. 
<laughs> I know the feeling. Know the feeling. This is what I wanted. Why, McKelly? Because you have to go get uh, an ice cap again? Or lemonade, or whatever that was? Ice tea. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> my bad. <laughs> uh, Interesting. You guys can't even see that because it's off the screen. <laughs> what? Oh yeah, it's like 6 p.m. So I suppose that's your dinner time. I'll be here for a while, so go grab your food, come back. Oh, unless your unless your uni is that kind of uh, uh, where you have to have, you have, like have to stay in the cafeteria to eat. Man, I hate those places. Yeah. The ones where you can just bring it back to your room is awesome. Oh, you gotta bring your own plate? That's lame. <laughs> Alright, cool, McKelly. Enjoy, man. standard disclaimer for as I'm writing 
Uh, feel free to interrupt me. Feel free to ask questions. Uh, let me know if you think something sounds weird. If it looks weird. Um, I'm open to suggestions. I know I look like I'm in the zone and I'm concentrating really hard. But, you know, do your thing. Interrupt me. Like, I, I, I want to interact. I want to get better. I want to... Uh, I want you guys to understand my process, ask questions, learn um, what I'm doing, and so that I can learn from you as well. So feel free, feel free. Hey, Johnny. Hemingway editor as well because uh, I find it's great well sure it's tiny right now Johnny but if you had been here at the beginning It says, if you could write for one game, uh, if you could write a story for one game, ever, what would it be? I had this hypothetical thought process this morning when I woke up, singing about Dota <laughs> and MOBAs in general. Super Metroid. They haven't done a proper 2D one? Like not even the Game Boy ones? That fan project that came out recently looks super cool though. Uh, I don't know what it was called, I can't remember. Sam was telling me about it.
Oh, that's what it was? AM2R? I heard it was awesome. Yeah, I mean, they, they put out the DMCA notices, and that's fair, uh, but they didn't uh, send them a cease and desist. So, you know, that's that's a different thing. <laughs> as far as I understand copyright law, anyway, <laughs> it's, it's a different thing. is the better word. I don't have an answer for what mine would be. I've thought about it many, many times. Um, As a writer, that's kind of a thing that you do, right? Like, it was said to me once, or I read somewhere, I can't remember who said it. I think it was day nine. Anyway, uh, one of the biggest compliments a writer can give is saying, I wish I had written that. Um, and there's definitely some stuff that I wish I had written, <laughs> for sure. I mean, I look at this, and this is what I would love to do. <laughs> Work for Telltale, working on those really, really cool, interesting character experiences. I haven't looked at it yet, uh, but I will be buying it soon. <laughs> because I just, I like what Telltale does. I have for years. Um, I have almost every single game they've ever made. <laughs> uh, I think the only ones I don't have are Game of Thrones... Tales from the Borderlands and uh, the original Sam and Max. But that is technically a LucasArts game, so who's to say? <laughs> but yeah, I'm a huge fan of what they do. Um, yeah. <laughs>
Yeah, you're right. It's not a huge problem uh, because we don't have uh, other subjects. It's just the single, so it's not awful. But it would, yeah, it makes more sense to add one or two more just to get it solid. this Good afternoon.
at all. I did it again, Ronnie. Uh, yes, basically. Basically, yeah. Exactly. What do you call a Greek house? I write interesting questions. I'm totally cool with reading kids' resources. They are often very, very clear. <laughs> Which I like. But what's it called? What is it called?
I think I just call it a house. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. I wasn't sure. I'm still on the fence about how much, how many Greek words I want to put in, but I thought this would be a, a good place. I don't understand the question you're asking, Drowny. Yeah, um, well, what I get from that is you're curious if it gets boring, if they don't have more internal thought, or did you mean external exposition? Um... So that's kind of how I'm interpreting it. I could be wrong. Wouldn't be the first time. Interesting. 
Oh, I see what you mean. So, so that's that's an interesting comment, Johnny. Because in a short story, adding many more characters would actually make it harder to follow, and make it less interesting. Um, you can't do the same things in a short story that you do in a novel. You just can't. Um, if we look at it, my original draft was, um, I think it's on the first page here. My original draft was about 3,000 words. Uh, I was aiming for 5,000. Um, I don't have space to write other characters. I just don't. Um, and, and that's fairly common in short stories. Um, yeah. There are other characters referenced. Uh, there is one other character who does make an appearance, and that's, um, the Fat Man, uh, what did I name him? Uh, Darius. He does make an appearance in one scene. Um, they also talk about, uh... The, the satyr, God, I am useless with names. So useless with names. Uh, they talk about uh, Persephone and Hades. Uh, they can talk about Zodnik. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm doing a, a proper rewrite of the of the stuff that I edited. You know, the, the, the next step uh, in the process, as it were. But yeah, I just, in fact, the one scene that has more characters, I'm thinking of cutting, because I don't like it. I don't feel like it fits. Um, and that's kind of the thing that you want to do with a short story is you want to explore very specific moments, uh, a very, very small, finite piece of a bigger story. Um, yeah. That's a good way to describe it. Hmm. Not sure. <laughs> There's a good way to describe it. I just don't have a, an interesting metaphor at the moment. You wouldn't print a book of a short story. In general, short stories get published in anthologies, uh, being a col uh, an anthology being a collection of stories, generally a collection of short stories. The, m the best place to publish short stories is in magazines. Um, actually, I can show you some stuff uh, if you guys are interested. Um, so short stories, uh, the short story market, uh, tends to be <laughs> nice, nice clutch. I like it. Uh, the short story market tends to be, uh, for speculative fiction or genres. Um, there's pretty much... From what I've seen, for most of the stuff I've seen, there's pretty much four or five major genres that really do well with short story publishing. Um, the first one being, 
Uh, I'll go to the big cam for a bit. Uh, science fiction magazines. Uh, Asimov being one of the most famous. Uh, the other one published by the same publisher. Analog. Uh, they're two of the biggest. Uh, there's a bunch of other ones. Um, oh, God. Uh, there's an Arthur C. Clarke one that's really good. Uh, there's a few others that do really well. Uh, so you see a lot of this. I mean, I have a ton of these floating around. Asimovs, 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 more Asimovs. So yeah, uh, lots, lots and lots of science fiction. I think I have more there somewhere, but yeah, analog. So then, uh, another place that does really well is Mystery and Thrillers. This is by the same publisher who do Asimov's and Analog, um, but they're a pretty big thing. Uh, with Alfred Hitchcock Magazine, Elderly Queen Mystery Magazine, um, stuff like that. So you see like this, this issue that I have here, this has uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven short stories, uh, two short reviews, uh, a part of a continuing story, and then just your regular like editors, comments, and a few things. Um, it's about 100 pages, 111 pages, 112 pages in that. So that's super common. Um, fantasy is, is still pretty big. It's not as big as science fiction, but it does have uh, somewhat of a following. There's less specific fantasy books or fantasy magazines as there are science fiction magazines. Uh, so they that's kind of a thing. Then you have this. Uh, I think I have some more of some of this other stuff too. Uh, Slice. Uh, this is fiction, nonfiction, poetry. So those tend to be the other ones that aren't like fantasy, science fiction. They're like literary fiction. Um, things, there's a lot of weird light on that. Uh, it's very bright. But yeah. So literary fiction, poetry, uh, creative nonfiction, stuff like that. You'll see a lot of different types of these. I have a few other ones here somewhere. I'd have to, I had to find them. And yeah, uh, people do actually buy those magazines. The reason that science fiction does so well, or the reason that science fiction is, is really, really big, is because it has a long-standing tradition of, of how people get their start. Like people, a lot of... A lot of very famous science fiction writers started off writing short stories, and that's the the market for that is is there. Um, so yeah, so that's one way. Uh, magazines are a big thing. Then you get uh, I got a bunch of stuff here. So these are more traditionally what we would call anthologies. So I've shown this a bunch of times, uh, Jorge, Jorge Luis Borges' uh, Labyrinths. This is a series of short stories, uh, all written by the same author. This happens a lot in science fiction and fantasy as well. Um, this is a book called Legends. Uh, so yeah, you got Stephen King, Robert Jordan, Terry Goodkin, Anne McCaffrey, Orson Scott Card. They all wrote a short story uh, to go in this. Uh, other ones on the back, you'll see the other ones. Raymond E. Feist, Terry Pratchett, Robert Silverberg, Ursula K. Le Guin, Tad Williams, George R. R. Martin. The Hedge Knight. A short story taking place in uh, A Song of Fire and Ice. So yeah, uh, these are more traditionally what we would call anthologies. Uh, so short story writers will write... <laughs> yeah, I know, right? My crazy bookshelves. I mean, 
There are some here even that uh, Thieves World, this is a very famous short story series, uh, where they're all collections of short stories by different authors that make up this bigger world. They all take place in the same place. George R. R. Martin is actually famous for that. He wrote a superhero uh, short story book series and a sort of superhero series of anthologies called, uh, God, what's it called? Something aces. Man, never remember anything today. Uh, it's called Wild Cards, right? I didn't even get. I didn't even get to the page. It's called Wild Cards. So that's a that was a huge thing. I mean, even looking up here, uh, George R. R. Martin first uh, began selling science fiction short stories at the age of twenty one. So that that's a big thing in in the the sort of speculative fiction world. So yeah, there's um, I found some other stuff. We got uh, what do we got here? Dark Wisdom, the magazine of dark fiction. We got Alan D. Foster, who's very famous. Um, I don't know the other ones as much. Uh, Space and Time interview with Robert J. Sawyer, the the science fiction author. Uh, Strand Magazine, William Faulkner, Dean Koontz cool stuff yeah uh lots of people did larry niven did uh ann mccaffrey did uh stephen king's written a bunch robert jordan's had one or two but they mostly take place in the wheel of time series in general um uh i don't even know the guy who wrote uh the martian I always forget his name. He got to start publishing short stories. He actually published almost all of his stories for free on his website. And web is kind of the new, uh, the new space for that. Publishing short stories online. Uh, there's lots of places that are doing that. I've shown uh, a few of them. Let's open up one or two here. Oh yeah, okay. I'm gonna show you guys this stuff and then I'm gonna take a, a quick break. If we go back to our main screen here, like these are two pretty cool magazines that I've been looking at, uh, Lightspeed and Beneath Ceaseless Skies, both of which publish specifically under uh, online, uh, like ma magazine style, but, but online. So this is totally a thing. Do I want to publish this story, Johnny? Uh, no, I do not. I want to publish my own short story that I'm working on outside of this. But the idea is that a short story is a short story. It, it is what it is. Um, I'm planning on having it available on the website to read for people to look at, uh, for sure. So that sort of publishing, I guess, like self-publishing on my website. Nothing fancy, but just just to generate interest. Um, I feel weird about publishing a story that I've basically shown entirely uh, the process of online. Not that I feel weird because I've done that, but just that it gets weird with publishing rights and certain things. <laughs> maybe, maybe, Johnny. Uh, I haven't decided yet how that would go. I think if I was going to do it, I'd do it kind of the way that uh, 
how to describe what I mean. Do they do it in here? Yeah. I'd like to do it something, oh, I go, I'll go to big for it. I'd probably like to do it something kind of like this. So, you know, it's got, it's got little, little bits of art in it just to, to spice it up. I like that kind of style. So yeah, um, that's what I'm thinking. But anyway, I'm gonna take a five minute break. I'll be back at a couple minutes after one o'clock. Um, but yeah, we're gonna keep going on a short story. Making, making progress, you know? And I don't think this is gonna be the final draft. I think I'll have to do one more, but this is gonna be a fairly substantial edit. It's gonna have a lot of the stuff coming together properly. So yeah, break time.